All right, welcome, Enrique. Wait, hang on a second. How the heck did I get the footballers who wants to be a millionaire? No, seriously, I was just playing a game in Mexico. Why am I here? All right, it's time for question one. What are you going to do next in this situation, Enrique? A, alert the ref to the second ball. B, ignore it and focus on the ball that's left. You know what? I'll phone a friend. Enrique, I haven't even finished the options yet. Hey, yes. Yo, bro. How you doing, man? Yeah, no, I'm good, actually. I wonder who wants to be a millionaire and ever be here. How's the family, man? How's the kids? Yeah, they're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my parents are doing all right. Your time's over. Why didn't you ask? Yeah, no, no. I just wanted to, to chat to someone, to be honest with you. Special beyond special. <clears throat> so can I call a friend again or no? Yo guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. This is of course the series where it brings you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. What's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, Willie's in the news, but thankfully Kyle Walker's been staying inside this week. As in his house, not inside anyone else. A Glasgow Willie Wonka experience came under fire this week after being as depressing as the rest of the city. Tickets were refunded after a lack of effort, grim decor, and the addition of Oompa Loompas in meth labs. Have you got any more chocolate, lads? No, but I have got six kilograms of ketamine in the back. Scott McTominay fancy taking the rest of the United squad back to his homeland, only to find a cigarette in his chocolate bar. Although, to be fair, up at Old Trafford, he'll have been used to food poisoning. But before we get into things, today's FTW is brought to you by today's sponsor, Manscaped. No one needs a Sunday League pitch down there, or the nasty nicks and cuts of a Sunday League match. And that's why 10 million men worldwide trust Manscaped for their crown jewels. That adds up to 20 million balls. Pause. With their performance package 5.0 Ultra, you get the Lawn Mower 5.0. With dual skin safe blades and an upgraded trimmer, that's tough on your hair but super gentle on your skin. You can use the trimmer blade, then easily pop that off and attach the foil blade to get down to skin level. That's two sensational strikers at the head of your classic 442. <coughs> no, you were yeah, you meant to take the camera off for that part. Uh, oh, oh. <clears throat> Not only that, but it's waterproof. No waterlogged pictures around here. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra also features the Weed Whacker 2.0, the Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, a crop soother that pampers your skin to keep you comfortable after shaving, and the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. And you can join the 10 million men worldwide by heading over to manscaped.com using my promo code for 20% off, free international shipping, and two free gifts. That's 20% off plus free shipping and two gifts with your Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. And trust me, your balls are gonna thank you. Now though, on to the football. And where else to start but a chaotic Carabao Cup final. And by Simic Liverpool's kids beat Chelsea 1-0 with a clutch last-minute header from Virgil van Dijk to win Jurgen Klopp's first silverware of his final season. <laughs> Liverpool fans had a clear message as soon as the first note of the national anthem started here. <laughs> and the injury list going into this one for the Reds was extensive. Alisson, Salah, Darwin Nunez, Jota, Zabozlai, Trent and Curtis Jones to name a few. It left Jurgen Klopp in disbelief going through his substitutes. 16? I had to push 17? 16? And it didn't help when Moises Caicedo put Graven Birch's ankle into standby mode. VAR was distracted at the time, which meant no punishment for Caicedo. If you ask my opinion, that's not a red card. By the end of the match, and we had regions on the pitch, mate. Jaden Dans had basically no experience. Connor Bradley and Jarrell Kwanzaa were present. And McConnell and Clark sounds like a furniture company, not a midfield. Watching Virgil van Dijk lead the midfield back to defend a counter-attack was really something to behold. Meanwhile, Ben Chilwell was determined to beef all of them. He had a clash with Connor Bradley in the first half after a rugby tackle, and he was about to take him back to his end. Uh, what's up, little bud? Got a staring problem, pal? Like what, dude? He's just looking at you. He's a baby. He's just Look at his face. You. Dumb little face. Yo, Zan, get your boy. There was more VAR controversy here as Nicholas Jackson was caught fractionally offside. He was following in Romelu Lukaku's massive footsteps. It was very, very close, I'm not going to lie, and a completely useless angle used by VAR. Then Virgil van Dijk put Liverpool ahead with a header. That, no, not that one. 60 minutes in, it gave us what we thought was the lead, but no, Wataru Endo was offside and was alleged to have blocked Levi Colwill. Now, to the letter of the law, I guess this is offside, but I've never seen this decision given ever in history before. And if you were to start doing it every single single week, you would lose about 80% of goals from set pieces. Seems like Arsenal do this all of the time. And that led to yet another nil-nil draw in 90 minutes between Chelsea and Liverpool in a final. 20 games, zero goals. What the f*** 
is that Quivine Kelleher and Petrovic here were in completely ridiculous form into extra time now and one Liverpool fan was giving it large to Conor Gallagher then with two minutes to go Virgil van Dijk was at it again from Acosta Simicast corner and in the 118th minute he would gift Liverpool a Carabao Cup title to defeat in the words of Gary Neville the blue billion pound bottle jobs and I hear it they lost to our C team bro brother ugh. Todd Bowley's gonna have a difficult time explaining what he's actually spent that one billion pounds on I need the washing machine and Dez or whatever they call it I'm away from Dez I'm, I'm not saying I'm in bed um, house, home. it was men against boys here and the boys won but that was only the second maddest thing about this goal as Virgil van Dijk was not the only one to finish Costa Simicast getting this guy in missionary is crazy Gary Neville will be getting a little bit bored in the commentary box when Costa Simicast has been pumping Virgil for four full minutes and the goal had Liverpool's injured senior men running for joy but allegedly injured Darwin Nunez skipping over the barriers with ease he's barged Salah out of the way he's out for an extra week now imagine Thiago trying this maneuver <laughs> But it was a truly unbelievable effort from the youngsters here who came on in a real high pressure match and went machine for machine with some very very expensive Chelsea players. Jaden Dans was five when Harry Kane made his debut and after just 32 minutes of football he's already eclipsed Harry Kane's trophy legacy. Oh, this one hurt. Meanwhile one Liverpool fan was rubbing it in Enzo Fernandez's face as he went up to collect his silver medal. Enzo, unlucky lad. <laughs> Hey, listen, you know what it is? Liverpool actually never wanted Enzo in the first place. It was just a typo, mate. He wins that ball so much. Virgil van Dijk confirmed at full time that he was not finished. Yeah, I know. He's Dutch, mate. I know this is a lot of celebrations for a Fruit Pastels playoff, yeah? But it's more the manner in which we did it. Chelsea fans will reckon we're over egging it. After all, their average age was lower than ours at the end of the game. But their youngsters are not like ours. James McConnell, Bobby Clark, and Jaden Dans. I've got about 10 games worth of senior experience between the three of them. You can't compare that to a 100 million pound already well established young marquee signing. They're not the same. They should be performing at a higher level than our youngsters were. Moises Caicedo will be trying to get into Liverpool's dressing room after the game and there was even more awkward stuff on Twitter as well as Manchester City posted a picture of Phil Foden with Cole Palmer's trademark emojis after their former man lost this final. Look listen you don't want to mess with Cole mate. He had some words of warning for his former employers after going and seeing the Bob Marley film this week. You better watch out dreadlocks. You better watch out. Oh uh, sorry. Uh, you, you, you'd better of watch out. Meanwhile for Liverpool and Luis Diaz's dad was out raving the next morning. Listen, he's living his best second life after the whole cartel incident. This is probably how he got out to be honest with you. He just had the kidnappers fed up. Fucking hell lads, he's raving again. I know we're criminals lads, but we need some sleep. Come on. He's on that Colombian cuckoo coffee, that Peruvian party powder, Zimbabwean zinger zapper. The match for hope in Qatar took place this week involving the likes of Kaka, Drogba and Eden Hazard and it saw Team Trunks win 7 5 in an absolutely ridiculous match. Before the game though, and there were two tactical masterminds of the beautiful game getting down to business. Arsene Wenger and I show speed. Like I'm good at left wing, I know, I'm very fat. You can use me, use me at a 4 3 four, three, three tactic. Boom, come in right. Oh, when, when Aiden has the ball, you will be yeah. Honestly, Wenger thought he was probably managing Yaya Sonogo again. Speed was also clashing with Eden Hazard over his position in the tunnel. Right wing, I'm left wing, so you gotta, so look, you gotta like, I'm left wing. Huh? You left wing? No, I'm left wing. You, bro, you gotta give me a go. I I need you to give me a goal. That assist was ready and there for the taking as Eden Hazard used his brilliant dribbling ability to get away from defenders left, right and centre, leaving Speed with an easy job to finish. Make a yeah, it was the worst miss of all time, and he's retiring again. Teammate Roberto Carlos will be volleying him out of there. Honestly, speed seat map for the next charity match is going to be altogether different. That'll probably be because he'll have been sent off by the 20-minute mark after he absolutely clattered Kaka. You can't just do this to a Ballon d'Or winner, for God's sake. I know it's a match for hope, but there's no hope for this kid. Though then again, himself and Didier Drogba did combine for two goals outright, and he asked the important question to Didier at full time. <laughs> Well done. Oh, wait, I got these questions. Are you talking about that? No. Drogba really was the star of the show here, doing despicable things to Vooj before bullying Arsenal and Sharky afterwards. Oh, no, Listen, listen. Growing up, you broke my heart so many times. Sorry. Who was that? That's mine. That was good, bro. Can you tell me a sleep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
This year, this year. Danny Aarons came in with a clattering challenge on Chunks, who did more damage to him than Digger D ever has. Meanwhile, for Antonio Conte, and he was taking matters into his own hands when he saw Casper Lee palm the ball into his own net again. £7.5 million raised here, though, for a sensational cause. Shout out to all the content creators involved, those who organised it, the legendary players that were involved too, and whoever took this photo. I genuinely can't believe this exists. Arsenal inflicted revenge on Newcastle in the Premier League with a convincing 4-1 win versus the Magpies. Now, excuse Gunners fans here, because if VAR came out in this one, they're getting PTSD. But the VAR in this game was very different indeed. Declan Rice was getting aggressive when he saw Bruno Gimaraes in the tunnel. Meanwhile, Gabriel will be finding an injured Joe Linton and setting the record straight. Newcastle are a completely different prospect when they're not getting involved in a pub brawl every 15 minutes. Will any gets into this side as things stand? Dan Byrne was getting distracted when he was supposed to be marking Bukayo Saka. And speaking of which, Rio Ferdinand will be left to press seeing Bukayo Saka look world class again. What the fuck, yo? God damn! In the FA Cup now, and Luton manager Rob Edwards said he had a plan for Manchester City. It can't have gone all that well, though, as they were defeated 6-2 by the treble winners. Oh, look at me. I'm Erling Haaland. I score bear goals. Grow up, bro. Lionel Messi could be seen texting Pep Guardiola to make sure he preserved his five goals in a game record. Imagine being a United team that concedes 34 shots per game, seeing this performance. Because I'm not going to lie, Erling had been a B-Tech Rasmus Hoyland for a second. Imagine being a Luton defender, seeing six foot seven Nordic meat galloping towards you. A Viking with anger issues and an amateur rap career sent them back to the National League. All of the first six goals here were the exact same, by the way. Kevin De Bruyne's assist tally was a little bit mental in this one. Four? That's insane. And honestly, his chemistry with Erling is flat out flirting at this point. No. I love you more. I love you more. It wasn't all smiles though for Manchester City as Jack Grealish picked up yet another groin injury, which now leaves him out to concentrate on bigger things in his life. I mentioned Manchester United, they played Fulham and it ended 2-1 to the visitors after a dramatic 97th minute winner from Alex Iwobi. I think the steward was getting a little bit too into proceedings. Meanwhile, Fulham tweeted that this was the reason why it was called the Theatre of Dreams. It's a shithousery award, silver standard. United Trey was in attendance and genuinely brought his curse out in real life. Meanwhile, United captain Bruno Fernandes was cursed in a different sense, going down with a catastrophic injury after striking the ball, only to be magically healed by the gods themselves. United fans were in awe seeing Bruno rise from the dead. Jesus! For Red Devils fans though, and there'll be a diversion on the way home for them to Norwich. Get the scarves out again, lad. But honestly, I would understand it from them because it doesn't matter what the scoreline is, they get battered. The amount of shots they're facing per game on average is absolutely out of control. And the amount of times Eric Ten Hag has been battered in a game is about five times more than Jurgen Klopp has been in his entire Liverpool career. Fulham fans though, they'll have been celebrating. But being their posh selves, they'll have struggled in attempting to converse with Alex Iwobi after the winner. Perhaps to be bear haps means to be very happy. Amari Forson made a first Premier League start here. Four sons. That just sounds like Anthony Martial's life. There's a bit of an injury crisis going on at United. The likes of Lisandro Martinez, Casemiro for a second, Hoyland. Tyrell Malassi is still out. I mean, he'd sprain his wrist putting a plaster on, to be honest with you. And I don't know how they're going to deal with Man City next, because they only just about dealt with Reed Or reading, in Maguire's case. Harry! Reed! Okay, so it says that, um, what's that word? A uh, hi hygiene rating. Harry, I meant Harrison Reed. They've, they've scored. It's, it's a wrap. Everton's point deduction from earlier on in the season after breaching financial rules has been reduced from the original 10 points to 6 after a review from an independent body. They're the first team ever to actually receive a points deduction that adds on points to their tally. Sean Dyche got 5 points from a draw. He might be the GOAT, you know. Meanwhile for Luton and they'll be devastated seeing this news knowing their conservatory is going back to the championship. At half time in Wolves' game versus Sheffield United and the two teams' youth disability sides were able to play on a small pitch in front of the fans at the stadium. That's Olivier Giroud, lads. I'm not being funny. This kid has asthma at worst. Look, no, I'm sorry. I get it. Not all disabilities are the same and not all are visible. Completely understand that. But this kid's just done more for Wolves than Diego Costa ever did. The guy's genuinely unbelievable. It just doesn't really seem like a fair matchup. I can't lie. That's all I'm saying. But either way, shout out these kids for Sheffield United. I hope their confidence hasn't been drained too much by all of this. Because quite frankly, they would get into Sheffield United's actual squad. There's the revelation that after his deal to Arsenal broke down in the summer of last year, Mikhailo Modric burst into tears at the airport. An emotional situation clearly before his £90 million move to Chelsea. The reality is he was crying, realising he was going to be playing alongside Mark Kukurea and Armando Broya. <laughs> 
Imagine him being on the flight, thinking he's heading to Arsenal, only to see Graham Potter sat on the row in front of him. Damn At least Mikel Arteta was in high spirits coming off the phone, knowing he'd pump fake Chelsea into spending 480 quadrillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have had a shock when he realised who was picking him up at Gatwick Airport. Over at Manchester United and Sofian Amrabat is now back from injury and ready to go. He's got a fresh trim and everything. Look, I'm not being funny, guys. This is these balls. Let's not beat around the bush here. That is a head massage at best. The barber might as well have got one of these things out. He's trimming his thoughts and memories, bro. Yeah, I'll get a short back and skull, please, mate. A new Amazon series is coming out, a documentary following the lives of the wives of Premier League footballers. We saw clips of Riyad Mahrez and his partner when they went over to Saudi Arabia. We saw James Tarkovsky last week, and things don't seem to be quite as positive in the Jorginho household. You're not going to propose to me, still, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> so then I can put this one on here. There we go. Just in case, it's free. It's gonna stay free. It's gonna stay free. <laughs> what do you say? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> I wait for your dancers. Yeah, I feel like we just witnessed a mental breakup, like live on camera there. Over at the darts, and one fan managed to get Luke Littler to open his FC24 pack. He's barely even old enough to play the game without a legal guardian. Meanwhile, Neil Mope, of course, on loan at Brentford, commented on his former teammate Lewis Dunk's Instagram after his goal against Everton, as he praised to quote his captain for scoring against the side that still technically employs him. It's just so easy, yeah. <laughs> now, over in France, and Kylian Mbappe met up with Emmanuel Macron, the president of France. So this is in the aftermath of the bombshell that he's leaving Paris Saint-Germain. And I can't believe this. The, the nation of France is genuinely willing to hand over president credentials to this man just for him to stay at PSG. They're going to make him the prime minister of the UN. I told you he was getting Gabon. He'll be feeling confident walking out of the meeting, having been offered the entire GDP of Central Europe, his brother as the next king of France, and the entire island of Guadeloupe. They're giving him copyright to the word croissant just for him to stay. Though things will get a little bit awkward when Macron crosses his arms during negotiations. Mbappé, 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 Mbappé. But in more serious news in France, and my well wishes are going to Bordeaux's Albert Elise, who suffered an unfortunate head injury in a clash during their match this week. He was actually induced into a precautionary coma, but has since emerged from that induced coma yesterday and is gradually recovering according to sources. Now over in Germany, and Bayer Leverkusen won yet again beaten Mainz this time to go 33 unbeaten in all competitions, a German record. Granted, Xhaka scored a banger in this one and then proceeded to fool the entire stadium with a hamstring injury only for it to be a celebration. Call an ambulance, but not for me. The physio needed a physio here. I think he was about to have a heart attack. I think he even fooled his own hamstring, to be honest with you. Ring, ring, from the hamstring. Great stuff from Granite, it's got to be said, and it's been a good week for all former Arsenal men too. As Harry Kane saved the day with a late, late goal for Bayern Munich against RB Leipzig, the Red Bull outfit were quite literally queuing up to score formation-wise. All Thomas Tuchel could do was sit on his suitcase, a suitcase Bayern's board members will be using to get him out of the club soon. With Harry Kane realising the only trophy he may well win this season is in the shape of Arsenal's badge, he's decided to turn it around. The winner's side still eight points behind a relentless Leverkusen. He might have to turn his attention to a different league if he wants to win a trophy. I can't wait for Motherwell players to undergo a rapid transformation when he signs for Celtic looking for an easy trophy next season. Elsewhere in at Borussia Dortmund, Marco Royce may well be leaving the club at the end of the season, a side that he's been so long loyal to in his pursuit for greatness in his career. Honestly, petition to send him to Leverkusen for a couple of months so he wins something. Then again, they'd probably then not win the league. And former German international Lukas Podolski has a new lease of life outside of football as he owns a chain of 30 kebab restaurants in Germany. Coincidentally, Luke Littler is on the way already. Imagine being drunk after a night out. You walk into a kebab shop at 3am off your tits and Lukas Podolski's carving you a GDK. Now, in Spain and Real Madrid faced off against Sevilla. Nice of Google to predict the score line for next season once Kylian Mbappe joins, but for this game and Sergio Ramos was getting emotional seeing Tony Kroos in the tunnel. Honestly, he was probably just crying at the fact that he doesn't play for Real Madrid anymore because his severe side were beaten late on by Luka Modric scoring a banger aged 59. The referee actually got injured during this one, but thank God Real Madrid have a long list of backups for him. At Barcelona and Lamine Yamal was getting his hands on deck, building and cleaning a seat for the new camp. Barca ain't even got enough money to pay builders fam. This is child labour mate. The chair's older than him. Gavi's gonna be furious, realising he's got to carry out maintenance to the urinals with one knee. Honestly, this is probably a seat ready-made for Arda Goulet, the way his season's gone. The guy could honestly make a career of rating subs benches for this season. It's not good. 
Meanwhile, elsewhere for Bar Saturn with their shirt supplier deal with Night ending soon, they'll be moving to Hummel for the foreseeable future, which genuinely fills me with depression. It has to be a bigger brand than Hummel, I'm sorry. I know they made some good kits like back in the day, but what next? 2027 kits made by Slazenger. By 2030, their home kits are going to be coming from the co-op in Italy, and there were absolutely mental scenes at Roma as a Torino coach was arrested for spying on them. He got into a tree to watch them and observe how they trained ahead of a league fixture upcoming. The Italian feds were bemused seeing Torino's fitness coach in an oak tree. How did you get up there? I fell. Feeling the need to spy on Chris Smalling, by the way. He's absolutely mental. This Torino spy is going to be left bemused when he sees Romelu Lukaku lace up his walking boots. To be honest with you, a shot from Rom is probably what would knock him out of the tree in the first place. Now there is time for your goals of the week and we've got yet more absolute bangers for you. And we start actually in Italy. Hopefully I've actually found some footage for this one that's not going to get me slapped off the whole website. But Rafael Leal went absolutely mental early on against Atalanta. Skipping away from two challengers down on the byline before absolutely slamming the ball into the far corner. And in true trademark style, he was smiling as he did it. Staying in Italy and shout out Olivieri at Venezia who scored a beautiful acrobatic effort. Lucas Bergval is a player that a lot of teams were looking to sign in the January transfer window. And the 18-year-old playing for Jurgen Gardens proved why with this one. An incredible solo effort from the future Tottenham man. Maybe an incredible bit of business from them to get his signature over Barcelona. And finally, we head over to Thailand, where a guy called Super Chai has scored an absolutely disgraceful long-range effort. The technique here, I think it clips off the bar as well. Everything about it is perfection. Hello all, and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> and that concludes the beautiful game. Now, over in the MLS, and DeAndre Edlin was giving a pretty high-profile team talk. Fight and win! There's no way they're listening, man. Come on. Luis Suarez, Sergio Busquets, Lionel Messi to DeAndre Edlin. Suarez is thinking about who he's going to bite next. Messi's posture during all of this is a disaster, and he will not be impressed when DeAndre Edlin tells him he needs to find a counter space down the left channel before kickoff. Over in Saudi Arabia, and Cristiano Ronaldo may be about to be investigated for a celebration that he did. So you can see here in the background, and to be honest with you, all they're going to be investigating is a massive chopper. I feel like Big Ron will be left confused when a Saudi Arabian FA has to see his sausage in order to conduct the investigation. I don't know, man. He's a fucking weirdo, man. Shout out to Benfica youngster Joao Neves, by the way, who put in an unbelievable performance in the Europa League, especially given the context of what's happened to him over recent weeks. Unfortunately for the youngster, a very promising prospect, his mother passed away. And you can see what it meant to him after the conclusion of the two legs as he was comforted by his teammate. The kid's going far, but of course, all with himself and his family. In South Africa and one fan is attributing Kaiser Chiefs poor form to his weight loss journey. Look listen, at least there's something that can come out of bad form. Kaiser Chiefs losing your weight? I predict a diet, am I right? So what you're doing, doing to him? Back in Saudi Arabia and Riyad Mahrez announced the launch of his new app. Who actually asked for this, guys? I'm not even gonna, because I know I didn't. Oh yeah mate, so how long you been married? Eh, uh, three years now bro, honestly it's crazy. Where did you meet, if you don't mind me asking? Oh yeah, just on Mahrez mate. I heard it only works if you use your left hand. Meanwhile, back in Australia, and there have been some sensational clips coming out of the A-League recently, and that continues as a side 1-0 up have the chance to wrap things up with a goalkeeper going forward, only for them to be seemingly allergic to the back of the net. It's this man, Still there. This man, second time. Goodness gracious, man. At Boca Juniors versus River Plate now, and there's been a glitch in the matrix. Did this ball hit the crossbar, or was it caught by the goalkeeper? We'll never know. South American fans are completely different. Letting off fireworks. I don't think I've ever seen a fireworks display for this for New Year's, let alone for a Copa Sudamericana game. This many explosions at a game in the US, and the FBI are getting called out. Meanwhile, in Brazil, we've got one player here using all of his sensitivity to catch quite possibly the smallest bird of all time. Maybe someone in Brazil has lost their feathered friend of a pet. And speaking of little guys,
And they say that Anthony doesn't have an influence on the game. Elsewhere in Argentina and at Shaco, we've got a dog getting involved here for some extreme pressing. I think he's genuinely put the attacker off the shot here, by the way. In Saudi Arabia again and at Al Ittihad, Zachariah Hassawi became the first player to ever get injured from a throw-in. And in the same game, Nibahor of Uzbekistan produced the best own goal of the week against their Saudi opponents. Now, closer to home, and you may well know Moyo of TikTok. Very successful content creator, extremely funny. Also plays a bit of football, but suffered an unfortunate injury this week, it's gotta be said. Not gonna believe it. <laughs> I don't wanna see my leg, so I'm gonna close my eyes and go over the shoulder. Oh, Look. Yes. Right. Sanchez is the worst at content. Creator. Have you ever seen an ankle do a no-look pass before? That's crazy. This is the Bobby Firmino of the foot world. I'm only making jokes because he was cracking them on his TikTok as well, but honestly, Moyo, get well soon. There's crazy stuff going on at Brighton, where their youth academy players are actually doing their UEFA coaching licenses at the same time, which is, of course, great future-proofing. Because if, you know, for whatever reason, things don't go as they would like in their playing days, if injury shortens their career or whatever, they've already got the coaching badges there to go straight back into the industry. At the Rico Arena and Coventry have a corner sponsor, and honestly, that is even more proof that the game is gone. If you wanted even more, then take a look at Shrewsbury Town, where Luke Leahy got a yellow card for drying a ball on a steward. I mean, at least ask first, to be fair, probably. Meanwhile, at Reading, and after further sanctions from the EFL, their fan group, which is protesting their current ownership, did a cryptic message using the first letter of each line in their statement. It's a shithousery award, and I completely agree. Meanwhile, shout out to Ronnie Wraith, a young kid who was unfortunately and incredibly unluckily struck by lightning during a game last year. Absolutely ridiculous stuff, to be honest with you. And obviously, it then led to a pretty long road to recovery. I think I actually put a GoFundMe in an FTW episode, like, just after it happened. Well, thankfully, he has been able to return to the pitch. One absolute hero overcoming an absolute freak incident to get back to doing what he loves the most. Over in Qatar, and we've got one of the most comedic own goals of all time here coming from Arkia. Oh, now, it's fair to say in Brazil, Jogo Benito is everywhere. Go down to the beach, you've got players doing showboating for days. Even down on the touchline, you've got managers flicking the ball over their opponents and then getting a yellow card for it. What is the charge? Not quite as much skill on show, though, in Argentina and at Banfield with this horror story from Ignacio Rodriguez. The shambolic footballing capabilities continue in Northern Ireland with a defensive mix-up howler for Dungan and Swift. They kind of looked like they were drunk there for a hot second. And this man will be if he continues to get pints shoved down his throat from the crowd. Up at Annan Athletic in Scotland, and they had a pretty simple update for what's been going on in their most recent match. And there's no such problems for this official. Maybe the only referee that's actually capable of running faster than the defenders can. Sign him, mate. If your centre-back can't keep up with the strikers, then get him involved. <laughs> Now there is time for still nil-nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is the segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football, and this week we've got a corker of a story. Now in the world of professional football, you know, you have very professional football club names. Let's say the city that you're based, and then Rovers, Wanderers, United. Well, obviously at amateur level, those rules don't really need to be adhered to. And in North London, it's causing a problem, even a postponement to a cup game, as one team is refusing to play their drawn opponent. Camden and Islington United were through to a cup semi-final, when they found out the name of their opposition, Munta Hunters FC. <laughs> For those who haven't come across the word Munta before, it's an offensive derogatory term for an ugly woman. Munda Hunters FC is absolutely outrageous. Truly something you can only get with English Sunday League. On to the weird stuff though now. In Sweden and at Malmo, they had the unenviable task of playing in ridiculous weather conditions. They were so bad because they basically had to travel up to the Arctic Circle for a cup game in Sweden that physically had to be played indoors because the blizzard conditions outside are absolutely shocking around this time of the year. The different surroundings didn't stop them thrashing their opponents though, 8 nil somewhere in the back of the sports hall. Last week, I told you the story of an American Samoan side who were really, really struggling in the Oceania Football Championships. They'd been thrashed twice on the bounce and were bottom of the table on minus 27 goal difference. Well, I'm afraid to report things didn't get any better in their third and final group match as they head out in the group stages with zero points and minus 41 goal difference after another 14-0 defeat. 14? You know you can't be prosecuted for that! And finally, we stay in that area of the globe as we head over to Tonga. A few weeks ago, 
ago, a man called Dylan Connolly, an Irishman currently living in New Zealand, had absolutely no association with the island until he received multiple Facebook messages asking him to play for one of the sides that was involved in the tournament. Their name to Papa of the Cook Islands, who wanted to draft him in for the OFC Champions League. But not only did he go there, take a punt and get involved, he absolutely slapped it, scoring four goals and according to the sweeper pod here, he even met the Queen of Tonga at a church service. Oceana has got a new goal scoring hero. That though is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media, it is at OfficialFNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves and goodbye.